One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Are you okay. All good. Thank you. Uh, look, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here today. Uh, today's a bit of a milestone for the Queensland Police Service in terms of our renewal and restructure. Our new structure takes uh, effect as of today, and I'm also happy to announce that uh, the latest of our deputy positions, uh, Deputy Commissioner Steve Golcheski, starts work as of today in his new role in the Strategy Command. Certainly, uh, the restructure process is aimed at getting more police out where they're needed on the front line and our whole focus is the front line services that we provide. We want to be the best police department in this nation and certainly we'll be working towards that. This restructure helps that. By taking away some of those lines on the maps, we're looking for a more flexible and more agile police service, one that doesn't take note of of the different areas where officers are assigned, but actually becomes a boundaryless uh, police service, so that uh, our priorities are always going to be the safety and security of Queenslanders wherever they are in the state. Um, I'm happy to take uh, any questions you have. What's different out there today than last week? Um, on the front line, um, I'm hopeful that you'll start to see more and more police. Uh, by restructuring the organisation and going from eight regions back to five and the 31 districts down to, to 15, what it does is actually release the back office staff. Um, now you know that we've had a number of uh, people who've taken redundancies uh, from our organisation and that's both uh, sworn officers and, um, and our staff members. And whilst it's sad to see so many people leave the organisation, it is part of that renewal. Um, there will be no net loss ultimately to the number of of sworn police in the Queensland Police Department. And in fact, um, that occurs with the 1,100 extra police that the government has promised us over four years as well. No net loss at all. Um, but certainly that whilst we lose that experience, um, it releases some officers from uh, administrative duties in those now defunct areas and, and they will go to frontline duties in the main. Do you have to up, uh, update their skill sets and this sort of thing because they've probably been on the road before? Um, certainly, uh, we have a uh, policy of continuous uh, training and testing of our officers, our, all of our sworn officers uh, under our Operational Skills and Training, OST, uh, and even back room officers uh, are required to keep their operational skills valid and up to date. Um, and that's an ongoing process. So uh, we will need, though, for some officers who've been off the street for some time, they will potentially need um, some extra training and we'll provide that. Commissioner, could you just run through the maths of how many staff have left uh, the force altogether and how many have come in? Could you just run through that sworn and unsworn? Uh, certainly in the, um, in the media release that I provided you today, the numbers are there at the bottom. I think it's 332. Uh, staff members who've left the organisation and 86 sworn members uh, have moved on. All of these sworn member redundancies were voluntary as you probably are aware and each, as I said earlier, each one of those over time will be replaced um, by an officer at a lower level, so constable to senior sergeant level in the organisation. Now, I know one of your changes is, uh, is more staff in the evidence collecting in regional parts of the state. Um, why is there a need to have officers out there gathering electronic evidence um, when it's being done in Brisbane? Certainly, the business of policing is a very uh, complex, um, a very complex task, and right across our organisation, uh, with prosecutors, with uh, evidence gathering, uh, particularly in the area of um, our technical, our technical areas, uh, for instance, our, our TI, our telephone intercept areas, those areas uh, are growing because that's where the, um, where the engine room of the organisation in terms of the forensics evidence, forensic evidence is most important. Uh, but even with that growth um, in the organisation, certainly there are still more police uh, on frontline or directly supportive of frontline duties. Aside from structural changes to the July 1 Herald, any other, other changes to, to, to the police service? I've heard this morning about lowering uh, tolerance when it comes to speed cameras and stuff. 
Uh, as I announced a couple of weeks ago, uh, we've used today uh, being the, the first day of the financial year as well and uh, certainly the first day of our new uh, structure because of the statistical gathering nature of what we do uh, through our evaluations. Uh, we've chosen today, as the, today to kick off our reduction in tolerances program. Um, as I said earlier, Queensland, Queenslanders have enjoyed probably the most liberal tolerances to speed enforcement anywhere in Australia and we are now going to reduce that and I, as I said a couple of weeks ago that will be done gradually and we'll evaluate each step as we move down that path. I'm hoping that people will drive to the speed limit um, because we know that speeding costs, costs lives in this state uh, and right today we're 17 more fatalities uh, at this point of the year, the calendar year, than we were last year and we know that many of those uh, extra uh, fatalities are attributed to speed. So. I'm simply asking people, do the right thing, look after the rest of the road users and your family and loved ones, drive to the speed limit. Uh, the tolerance reduction program will operate um, for as long as we need to, uh, to bring the message home to Queenslanders. If you speed anywhere, anytime, you're likely to get a ticket. Officers that are in the, um, I suppose, on back room or admin duties, were many of them placed there um, after being on sick or stress leave and they're trying to wean themselves back into force um, to help work? Certainly, we've had officers over time who've chosen um, uh, office duties over a frontline duty because of uh, an injury or something like that. That occurs. Um, there are still those types of jobs within our organisation, without doubt. There are just less of them today than there were yesterday because of the restructure. So is there a bigger push now to get those officers back onto the front line than there was before? No, as I said, if, if there is a good reason for an officer to have a less physical posting, um, particularly because of an injury or an illness, um, that can be accommodated within the organisation. Um, but we had many officers who were simply doing those jobs because those jobs were necessary. We have removed many of those jobs because of the, uh, the reduction in the number of regions and districts that we have. The, num the, the number of uh, staff uh, made redundant is actually more than what was originally announced, and, but the number of uh, sworn officers is less uh, that have been made redundant. Has there been any reason why there's been changes in the, the numbers? I'm sorry, uh, I said there were 86 sworn officers uh, who took redundancy. They were all commissioned officers. Originally, um, I had uh, budgeted to 110 uh, commissioned officers who might go. The number of jobs that are actually going to be replaced is between 100 and 110. Uh, we only needed uh, the lesser number of commissioned officers to leave because there were a number of vacancies. So there still will be over 100 positions that will be reallocated from commissioned officer positions to uh, the lower ranks, to the NCO ranks. And, and the number of staff being increased? The th no, uh, the 332 uh, was uh, 120 immediately uh, uh, after the uh, change in government last year when the initial uh, implications of, our, of the financial situation in Queensland was re recognised. Um, we were able to look at, uh, at that position then there was a further, um, a further number after that that then left the organisation in terms of the 222 uh, that then left the organisation post that in a, in a more planned way, again, to deal primarily with the restructure of the organisation. Has Task Force Hydra or the uh, major and organised um, crime squad had any uh, impact from the job losses? Um, certainly Task Force Hydra is mainly staffed by uniformed officers and, and detectives. Um, certainly in terms of uh, our ability to deal with um, OMCGs and gangs, uh, that has not been diminished. Um, the expertise of the people in those areas is absolutely critical and um, obviously that's also an area of the organisation that um, uh, probably over time will grow rather than reduce. I see them as being a frontline team uh, in all respects. Sorry, Commissioner, just back on the evidence collection, are you seeing like a growing amount of evidence that police are dealing with every day? I think it's true to say that with the advances in technology and science, uh, more issues become available to us and more evidence becomes, uh, becomes available to us that perhaps we didn't even contemplate years ago. DNA is a classic example of that, where um, whilst DNA um, has been uh, around for a number of years now, 
um, the technology and the science behind that, the analysis of the DNA, is changing all the time and is becoming much, much more accurate and better. We need to match uh, our techniques in evidence collection to the ability to get the best possible results from it. Obviously for anyone on staff there are big changes, but from the point of view of someone at home picking up the phone, dialing triple O, what, what changes do you expect them to experience? Um, look, we've only, we've only started this uh, change program over the last uh, eight months. This started uh, basically uh, the planning in about August of last year. Um, when I became the Commissioner, I was able to then uh, put some dates and, and milestones in place. Uh, today is the day that we start our, re our structural changes um, come into being right today. We've had a long period of consultation with all of the key stakeholders. Um, but from this point on, uh, we are now going to start working on uh, different tools and different processes that our people can have a reduction in, in what we're calling blue tape, meaning uh, the same as red tape reduction for members of the public, we're looking at blue tape internally, trying to make our processes and policies more simple for our people to use themselves because um, over a long period of time we have put in place layers and layers of policies. Uh, we need to strip a lot of that uh, almost irrelevant information away from our people and, and simply give our people the ability to do their jo job more effectively and efficiently. Will be safer? Uh, ultimately, absolutely it will. I mean, having any one extra police officer on the road, even for one shift uh, a week, is, um, makes Queensland a, a, a safer place. There's no doubt in my mind about that, and that's ultimately our aim. Uh, the other critical part of our restructure uh, that you will see into the future is uh, the greater use of task force policing, bringing together groups of police who are uh, focused on either case or place uh, events. So by that I mean a particular case, as in, the, as in, for instance, every murder we have is basically we put a task force together to investigate that murder. Um, but there's also the Im implications of place management where we might have break and enters or we might have a spike in um, robberies in a particular area. So in that place, we put a task force together to deal specifically with those events. And, uh, and the task force uh, gives us the, great, the, um, the greater ability to focus our resources on that one uh, event or one series of events. Um, in the past, it's been uh, often difficult to pull together the resources we need quickly to address those, those issues. The future of the Queensland Police Service will be around being able to very quickly address crime problems anywhere in the state. I think um, you would have all know of uh, Project, or oh, sorry, our uh, Operation Escalate, um, and uh, that's a classic example of, uh, of bringing together a group of people in a task force to deal with uh, place management um, for crime. Quite a bit of criticism about the size of the, the new regions, and you know you have um, the assistant <coughs> commissioner based in Rockhampton, but it includes the Sunshine Coast region. I guess. Yep. Do you still stand by the size of those regions? Absolutely, but two things. One, the reason uh, we're able to go to those larger sizes uh, is that. When we put the map together uh, about 20 years ago, uh, just after Fitzgerald, that broke Queensland up into the eight policing regions, we didn't have the communications technology that we have today. Um, the, instant, the instant ability to talk to each other right across the state uh, just wasn't available to us in the way it is today. Uh, so uh, in reality, you could take all the lines off the map in many respects at the regional level and, and, and have one big Queensland region. You could actually do that. But um, that's probably a step too far in terms of uh, giving people some uh, leadership where we need it out there in those uh, reduced number of regions to five regions. So I stand very much by the fact that I still believe that we'll be, we will easily be able to provide the level of service we do, the oversight that's needed uh, by management structures in a regional component um, and still give the partnerships between those, those communities and their, their senior managers in the police department um, the, the level of interaction that they need. What would be an example of something that um, you know, the top cop on the Sunshine Coast would have to go to the Assistant Commissioner in Rockhampton to get approval for something? Um, well, 
very, there will be very little in the future because uh, as, as we have had in the past, our districts become, have always been our operational centre of planning and, and deployment of staff. So the district level in our organisation is, is probably the most key um, structural level or layer. And that's the same for accountability. Um, it's why the, the operational performance review always uh, that we implemented about 10 years ago always focused on the district level. Um, so uh, our districts are, are key to the operations of the organisation. Now, we've reduced those from 31 to 15. But again, the reason we did that was because of the ability of, of managers to communicate more generally across that area seamlessly now as opposed to 20 years ago when they when it was quite difficult when we were still using manual typewriters and fax machines. Can you see a time where there won't be any boundaries? Um, I want to try and change the culture of the organisation to disregard the boundaries in, to a, at a specific level and that's the operational level. Um, the less lines on the map that we have the better but uh, we'll have to evaluate the impact of, of this change and then we'll look to the future um, and consider what's possible then. How you would like to see that in the future though? Um, what I'd like to see is that um, police can operate in a way that um, uh, a line on a map, for instance, the Bris Brisbane River, doesn't prevent police driving across the bridge and doing their job. Now, in, in theory and practice, that's how it's been in the past, but there is still for a range of policing duties, those lines uh, have, have meant a lot, and I want to change that culture ultimately. And Commissioner, a 29 year old officer has been stood down um, for alleged misconduct on the job. Any idea how long that investigation might take? Um, no, uh, I hope it's done very, very swiftly. I think, uh, in fairness to both the officer and, um, and to any person who was affected by that officer's conduct, um, we always try and move forward with these, but uh, in these more serious matters, and I consider any use of excessive force as being uh, very, a very serious matter for our organisation. Um, we need to, or any allegation of that, we need to um, uh, look at them quickly and, and make, make the decisions that we need to make about the officer and, uh, and whatever they did. Uh, it's always difficult to talk about these matters though because uh, you know, we work on the basis that uh, the investigation has to take place, there has to be procedural fairness, people have to put their stories forward. Uh, so that's why it does take longer in the more complex cases. Was it a member of the public who put forward the complaint? Um, look, I'd rather uh, leave the rest of that discussion to um, the aftermath because, uh, as I said, it's always challenging to, um, to talk about discipline investigations um, at the early stages because there needs to be fairness in the way that they're investigated. Jim Carmody's report's going to come down this afternoon that says that police should be charged with issuing the, the authority to issue blue cards. Are you happy to take over that responsibility? Uh, we do a lot of work at the moment in terms of already checking uh, people's histories for blue cards and the like. Um, I'll certainly be looking at that recommendation and obviously uh, talking to my minister and, and the government will have a view about you know, where that responsibility lies and um, uh, certainly if it's to come to us, um, I'll be arguing for the necessary resources to deal with that. How many more resources will you need? Uh, look, I have no idea at this stage, um, but certainly it's a very, it's a large task and um, uh, it's something that again, uh, I'll wait until we fully consider it and get the government's view on where it should uh, where it should lie. In relation to Hydra, uh, any idea on, on how soon we might see that, that expanded as you had earlier or by how much? No, um, as I said, we'll evaluate our new structure continuously and it's one of the reasons why starting it on the 1st of July um, actually benefits us in terms of our statistical year as well. Um, and we'll be looking at all facets, uh, not just of Hydra, but all of our units right across the state to make sure that we've got the, the right mix of resources within those units, uh, because we do have uh, uh, a wonderful uh, staffing model that contains people, uh, both our sworn and staff members, who have uh, particular skills to do uh, quite specialist roles right across the organisation. So it's important that we make sure that those skills uh, sets are right for the jobs that we're asking them to do. How do your officers view the changes in the, that, that these enormous changes in the restructure? Look, um, 
Uh, no change of this magnitude is easy. Um, it's never without pain. And I think that uh, with the consultation that's been ongoing ever since the announcements uh, last Christmas, that our officers certainly will be looking at this with, I hope, with optimism and with an air to um, looking at the opportunities that will present themselves. Because at the times of greatest change, you also have the greatest opportunities. And many of the things that we've done uh, in making these changes have been exactly what our officers have been asking for uh, over a period of time. And in particular, uh, our ability now to move forward and make further changes in the technology that our officers use um, in reducing that blue tape as I've talked about previously. I think that they're the clear benefits that officers will see into the future. When you restructure document, it talks about some of the things that you'll need to, to get to that point. So it talks about people being able to e-report stuff. It talks about more data to the police officers in the field. It talks about Absolutely. Um, that borderless patrol stuff. When will those things that will enable you to get those benefits, when will we see those happening? Look, as quickly as I can bring them in. Um, as I said, um, this journey started um, basically eight months ago. I don't think anyone in our organisation has seen such major change in such a short period of time in... in well, certainly not in um, uh, since the aftermath of Fitzgerald, but that that change was driven from without, meaning it was it was change that came as a result of a uh, uh, of a crisis within our organisation. What we're seeing at the moment is internally led change, and that's uh, a certainly, uh, in my view, a much better way to move forward. That we have uh, as an organisation that we can direct the changes that need to happen both to the benefit of our own members, but certainly ultimately to the community. So that's why I'm very, um, I'm very optimistic that our officers will come on that journey and continue on that journey of continual change that's, uh, that is impacting on all of us in our daily lives, whether it be our professional lives or our personal lives. And talking about those numbers, I know you talked about the numbers that are leaving and, and the changes back room to front room. Are there more officers on the on the beat now, or is that something that's still to come? Where are we in that transition? Um, certainly, you can't you can't just simply manufacture um, 86 new new police officers, and that will have to happen. But in the restructure, we have moved a range of people as we as we shut down uh, districts and and regional offices across the state. Some of those jobs have already moved onto the front line. So so right today, there are more police on the front line as a result of the restructure. A hundred fewer senior positions, that's, you know, really reduces the chance for senior police to, to advance their own careers, doesn't it? Uh, thanks, David. No, it's a very good question. Um, the reality of that, though, is that we're still in a growth phase as an organisation, and, and whilst we've seen um, 86 commissioned officers leave the organisation, and as I said, the number of positions that will be transitioned actually are just over a hundred uh, commissioned officer positions. Um, Again, technology in terms of oversight, um, the, the transition of specific tasks, for instance, um, one of the areas that uh, no longer exists within the organisation is our regional traffic coordinators, and that's because we've centralised uh, the chain of command for traffic enforcement to our road policing command, which started the, this morning. Um, and. Um, uh, we've moved, obviously, we've moved the, uh, uh, an acting assistant commissioner into the role of managing that particular command. But we, ha we don't lose the expertise because we have the ability now to have a, a central command that, that provides uh, a contemporary but also consistent policy response to issues right across the state. And that policy then directs our operational, uh, our operational work out there on the street every day. Um, and targets the sorts of offences uh, and enforcement and proactive strategies that we need to uh, address uh, in terms of road safety for Queensland. Um, well, I'm just trying to, in terms of how we give, uh, how things are dealt with in, in Brisbane, are there much changes? No. Obviously, the further we get out in the regions, it, it, it's, it's more broad because you've got different layers. But in Brisbane, are the changes that great? Look, the, no, right across the whole state. The public uh, can still ring um, the police numbers. They can still go to their local police station the way that they did yesterday. There is no difference in the way that um, we will provide 
our services to the community. What I am saying clearly though, that over time we will improve those services and over time we will continue to increase numbers out on that front line. Folks, I think we've hopefully, I think we've exhausted things. Uh, thanks very much for coming in. It, I mean, it is a great day for the Queensland Police Service today and uh, it's a great day for Queensland that uh, we, now, we are now firmly on the track uh, to improving our services to the public.